In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the balsa wood truss. So let's start by looking in MD Solids. So you are going to start off in MD Solids. It'll look something like this. You're going to go into the truss module. And once you're in there, you need to set up the grid so that it will, it will work for the size of truss you need to make. You need to make a truss that's six and a half inches wide by 3.25 inches tall. And so what I find works well is to um, create a grid that's made of quarter inches. Um, so basically four times six and a half, which is 26, and then four times um, 3.25, which is 13. So what that looks like is when you first start off, you're going to uh, be given this little template that allows you to set up your spacing. Um, your horizontal spacing and vertical spacing intervals um, are best set to one. And then the number of spaces is, is going to be 26 in the X direction and uh, 13 in the Y direction. So that'll give you a grid spacing that'll fit the jig on the truss tester and will um, allow you to create a truss within a precision of a quarter inch. All right, so when you create the truss, you need to start off with your members. It's really important that you always have joints down at the bottom corners, both of them. And uh, I'm just going to set up a pretty basic little design here, but one that works pretty well. Um, so I'll have those two members on the side. And then uh, you need to make sure that whatever your design is, that they come together at the top and uh, are, you're able to apply the load at the center of the top. All right, so let me just keep putting these members in and show you then how to put the supports in. So the supports, then you're going to uh, click on supports over the side here. Um, you want to have a pin and a roller support. So over on the side that you choose to put the pin, you're going to drag down for the Y component of that and drag to the side for the X component of your pin. Then on the other side, you will need to drag, click and drag down for the roller support. All right, so there's your pin and roller. Um, the last thing you need to do is apply a load. I would recommend you apply 10 pounds. So click at the very top there, drag down, and put 10 in, and then enter load. All right, so this is all set up right now. Um, if at any point anything that you've created needs to be deleted, you can go then to erase. And then uh, click on what you want to delete. So erase, and then let's say you want to erase a member. Um, and then you just kind of drag over it, and it erases it. So I don't want to erase that, but I just thought I'd show you how to erase stuff. So we'll put that back in. And assuming that this is statically determinant, we can then go and hit Compute, and we can see what the tension compression in each member is. So the numbers you're seeing here, um, in order to optimize this design, you want them to be as low as possible. And so with this standard 10 pounds applied at the top, the lower we can get the numbers in each of the members, both the compression numbers and the tension numbers, that means that this truss will be able to hold more weight overall. So with 10 pounds, it provides uh, five pounds of compression in this member, then if we can get that even lower, that means that overall, we should be able to apply more weight. Once you've decided on the design and then you've set it up to be the right size, you wanna draw it to scale. So I have a, a few drawn to scale here. Um, you should probably try to find some graph paper that you can use that is uh, like with an inch um, grid on it would work really nicely and make sure that you start off with a six and a half inches wide by 3.25 inch tall box because that your truss has to fit within there otherwise it's just not going to work. Um, carefully cut all of your little pieces of balsa and set them up according to how you've designed your truss and make sure of course that you have the um, spot for the force to be applied up at the top. Um, after you've uh, cut those all out and glued them, you'll probably want to set some gussets onto them. Um, and just going back, um, putting some masking tape on them is going to be useful just to kind of hold them in place as you're doing gussets and gluing and whatnot. Um, and then what I did was I put gussets on the 
back side as well. So you don't have to put gusts on both sides, but uh, I'm hoping that that's going to help it be just a little bit stronger. <laughs> 